pie there. So far, we have learned the graph of an ellipse. Aside from this, we also learned some of its parts like the foci and the center. We also know the length of the semi-major axis to be A, while for the semi-minor axis, it is B. Our goal in this video is to find this length out here called the focal distance or focal length, which we denote by C. More specifically, what we will do is we will find the value of C in terms of A and B. So we'll do that one since when we deal with equation of an ellipse, oftentimes the only given value is A and B. So it is really nice if we can express C out here in terms of A and B. So without further ado, let's start. So to start, let's clear out some space first there and move this up out here. And so to be able to express C in terms of A and B or to derive C, we'll start by using the definition of an ellipse or that is given a point P1 and we obtain its distance to the first focus and the second focus or the foci and another point p2 and we obtain its distance similarly so we have this and this by definition we know that the sum of the distances to the foci given a point is constant this means that the sum of these two is equal to the sum of this or that is p1 f1 this part this part out here plus p1 f2 this one out here is equal to p2 f1 plus p1 f p2 f2 rather this part and so we have this equality we'll take advantage of this equality out here so let's start first by determining what the value of the line segment P1, F1 is, or this one out here. So we'll utilize this illustration. First, take note that we are given the center of the ellipse, which is this one. And by definition, we know that this is the midpoint of the line segment connecting F1 and F2. So this one is the midpoint and when and since we know that this one is the midpoint we know that it bisects or divides this line segment into half or two equal parts and since this part out here is equal to c it follows that this part out here must also be c so we now have this value out here moreover we are already given that this out here is b so the semi-minor axis has a length of b. And what do we do to obtain the value of this? Well, take note that we actually have a right angle out here since the major axis is perpendicular to the minor axis. So that is always a fact or that is always true. And so we know that since we have a length out here and another length out here, and we have a right angle out here, we'll be applying the Pythagorean theorem to obtain the length here. So by Pythagorean theorem, so I hope that by this time we know how this works, the length out here will be equal to the square root of b squared plus c squared. So we have this. Next, we find the value of this one. So p1, f2, so this one out here. So similar to the first one, we have here B and C. And again, this out here is a right angle. So applying Pythagorean theorem again, we'll obtain the square root of B squared plus C squared. And so we now have the value for P1, F1 and P1, F2. We now move on to the line segment P2, F1 or this one out here. Observe that we have the value 
A out here and C out here. So to obtain this, we simply subtract this large part out here by the smaller part to obtain this portion out here. Or that is, we'll have A minus C. So that is the length of the line segment P to F1. We now move on to the last one, which is the line segment P2, F2, or this whole part out here. And this one is easy, since we are given A and C out here. So to obtain this whole length, we simply add this up to obtain A plus C. So we'll have A plus C out here. And so now, we have written our equation a while ago in terms of A B and C only. And so we now focus our attention in here. No need for this one. And we'll try to obtain C here in terms of A and B. So let's start. Let's focus out here. First, observe that on the left side, since these two are the this, these two are same or similar. No, they're actually the same, yeah. We just add them up. And then on the right side, since we have negative C and C out here, that two cancels out. And then we also add these two since these two are same. So we'll have 2 squared of B squared plus C squared equals 2A. Divide to both sides. And so the 2's out here would divide. And we'll be left with the square root of B squared plus C squared equals A. Take the square both sides and we'll have b squared plus c squared equals a squared. Again, what we want to do is we obtain c in terms of a and b. So we need to isolate c. So we start that one by moving b squared to the right. And so we'll have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Take the square root and we'll have c equals the square root of a squared minus b squared. And this is what we want. We actually obtained the answer that we want already since we have written C in terms of A and B. And more importantly, we found the length out here. The length that we want to find in the first place. And so that is the value of C in terms of A and B. So to summarize, so clearing this out and moving this downward, Given the length A, the length of the semi-major axis, and the length B, the length of the semi-minor axis, we can obtain the focal length or focal distance out here. And that is just simply given by C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared. And so that is how we obtain and derive the value of C, the focal distance. So take note of this one as this will be useful in a future video when we determine the parts of an ellipse just by its equation. Oh, by the way, talking about the equation of an ellipse, that will be our next topic in this playlist. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this one. You may comment down below um, whatever you want to comment, whatever suggestions and recommendations that you have for this video, um, this playlist, and this channel in general. So yeah, that's it. And I hope you learned and enjoyed a lot from this video.